We are Casey and Savannah, and we've been best friends for 10 years. Give me a look at that. They're like a printed, you can see the mountains actually. Over the years, we have been on many adventures, including plenty of travel, hiking the John Muir Trail, starting multiple businesses, building out a camper van, and creating a little homestead in the city. You even may have seen one of our mini DIY stock tank pool videos. We recently bought five acres of raw land in the Upper Cumberland area of Tennessee and are embarking on our biggest adventure yet. Follow along as we build our off-grid homestead from the ground up. Okay, today we are working on my dream rose garden. Well, I don't know if it's a dream. I mean, <laughs> I've had a rose garden in Nashville, um, mm -hmm. but it, it didn't necessarily live up to all of my dreams. And we're starting on planting six roses today. Savannah kind of designed a, a spot. Really, I always wanted a cottage garden, but what I discovered at our house in Nashville, which we actually had someone like professionally design it, you have to have a lot of plants, a lot of flowers to have that cottagey look and everything needs to be planted together. We actually had like a really big space in the front yard and so we just, it just, it, it always looked nice and it looked landscaped and it was pretty but it was like too far spread far apart. And this is a project, cottage gardens are, unless you're a zillionaire, you know, take a lot of time and that's what this will be. But we're kind of working, we've kind of put it a little bit closer together. So hopefully it will look better quicker. Also, she said we're planting six roses. We're planting 16 roses. She, you said six. <laughs> so we've kind of mapped out the shape as you can see. And this is, we're kind of making it in a shape where we could build onto it later if we felt like we wanted to do that. This is going to be an arbor, which we literally have sitting right there. We meant to set that up, set that up at our old house and we never um, ended up doing that. So it's gonna go here. And so that's what you'll walk through to get into this cottage garden. May seem a little strange right now because it's behind the camper, um, but this spot gets really great sun and the camper will not be here forever. We've actually basically moved out of there. We've got a lot of storage stuff in there, um, but it is not being used by us except for storage basically right now. So um, it is not too far away from actually leaving our land and then this will make a little more sense. So the idea is you walk in, probably have some kind of gate, maybe we'll have like a name on it, cottage garden or something, I don't know. And then we've kind of put little X's where each rose will go and they're three feet apart. And then we've left a lot of room in the front so that we can plant things without crowding the roses out. And this is, oh, she's bringing the roses over the walkway. So you would just walk through here and there's a little, there'll be a little berm type thing here. Lots of roses. Lots of other things too, it won't just be roses, but this is kind of the idea. It's just a rough shape. We're definitely gonna cut some of the high spots out and mulch it really good. And the mulch is kind of what is going to make the actual shape. Um, and we'll make it a lot neater than just like this rough sketch, but this is the idea. Now, in order to plant these roses, we have to dig a bunch of holes. And if you've ever planted a rose, you know that you have to dig big, deep holes. And we actually have an auger and we, in the fall, could not get it to work. Um, it's always kind of a pain in the butt, but I had bought a part back then hoping that that would fix it. And so today we're gonna have to change that part and um, see if that worked because that will make our life a lot easier. It took us about 20 minutes to do the holes, but they 
do need a little bit of digging down at the bottom. And Casey already started planting and she's gotten, you have six roses. No, there's five, I see. <laughs> got five roses in the ground didn't look like much right now but it's just the beginning Basically, when I walk in the woods, I always see these like decomposed trees that look like they've been here forever. And that is like gold. It's like compost gold, mulch gold, plant gold. I was hoping I could get enough to mulch around the roses. Um, it doesn't come up as easy as I thought, but I think with a lot of hard work, <laughs> I can harvest enough. I mean, it's everywhere. It's good stuff. Would I recommend sticking your hand in a rot rotted out tree? Probably not. I'm just right now just putting this around the base of the rose just so that it stays hydrated but we'll this whole thing is going to be filled in with more dirt and mulch and plants and whatnot but we just wanted to protect the roses and also to give us a visual because they're planted pretty low in there and nobody wants to step on them barely see where they are they're all, see, they're all back there. So this will at least signify where they are. I was talking to Savannah earlier today about how probably not many people would build a rose garden before having a lot of major infrastructure things in place or having their house sorted out. But we've been staring at dirt for six months now and it is time it is time for some beauty and flowers very excited they should bloom this year and I'm very excited about that today we are going to start installing some gutters on the back of the house so we can collect rainwater and we actually already have two IBC totes that we're going to put back here for that and we had to get those ready. So it's gonna be a really simple system right now. Eventually it'll hook up to the sink in the house and you'll always be able to like get water out of them from like put in a bucket or something like that. Um, but for now it's gonna be really simple. All right, there's already been a change of plans. We have decided to install the gutters on the bathroom actually um, because we've been talking about people coming to visit um the weather is getting nicer so we're going to be able to have visitors more and we like visitors we are going to start collecting water first by the bathroom because that's where we're going to need the water the most because there's going to be a toilet and the shower in there whereas in the house there's just going to be a sink Hey, 
Tell us your plan. Um, I have two like little um, fittings, I don't even know what to call them, that I have modified. We have a lot, a lot of plumbing stuff and a lot of just little things that go to like water hoses and that kind of stuff because of our sock tank pool business. Um, so I just kind of went through there and found some things that I could piece together and I'm going to connect a hose from this to the one at the top and then the, the water is going to uh, come up, come from the gutters at the top through the top one and then when it gets to this little fitting down here it'll go down to this one and um, which I haven't figured out exactly how that's going to work on the other one but we're going to do this one first and also um, our drill is dead like we have this um, but it's just an impact driver, mm -hmm. an impact driver. But like the drill has a different attachment here and it, there's just certain things that you need to drill for. And ours is just like, it's just died. Like the batteries are charged and it doesn't work. So, which has happened to us before. So we're probably gonna get a different brand this time because that one has had to be replaced before. Anyway, now I'm cutting the hole and um, gonna try to get these pieces attached through here. I already know that this is gonna have to be. So we're gonna try to see if my arm, it won't, but we can. <sighs> oh, you're so close. <sighs> <laughs> Wait, let me see. Put your. Oh, you just, it just doesn't bend. Ow! Oh! Okay. Ow! Ow! <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Why where are your legs in this position? <laughs> what was the problem? <laughs> You go, oh no, what's happening? <laughs> Turn the ladder around. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was very painful. <laughs> I basically bent in half over this bar and I tried to put my foot down on the ladder and <laughs> to put down the ground, but it was, I was too high up. Quite a wild ride. I wish we could have videoed uh, what just happened. <laughs> I'll show you. So here's our little piece. It was really interesting, but we got it in and yeah, we couldn't record. It's just too stressful. Also, these are my hands now. Filthy, totally filthy. These things don't even look like they're dirty because they're white, but they are. This is our contraption to get that inside. So you're just gonna go from that way. Oh, too short. Go back a little, just like a little. Yep. Oh, it's stuck on. Go back a little more. There we go. All right, just hold it right. It's in, but just hold it. Uh, come on. And start screwing it on. There's a spider. I'm gonna put it. I'll have to spade right them out when I'm up there.
Next hurdle is getting this on top oh. of that. And these weigh about 100 pounds. Is that how much they weigh? Yeah. The thing is, is they're not like, I feel like, um, like the weight of it, we could lift it up, but it's the, it's very awkward. It's like, well, it's so huge. It's so big. And so if you're holding your hands like this, it's still, you know, kind of like topsy turvy. And we had to take it down or we, no, we put, did we put one up in the trailer? Mm -hmm. We've done it. And, but we had the trailer to yeah. catch it. So it's going to be a task. Oh my god, there's nowhere to hold on. Oh jeez Louise. Where there's a wall, there's a case. There's a wall, there's a case, there's a <laughs> So my idea is to lift it onto this table. It's only like halfway. I, I, I don't believe it. She doesn't idea. believe I don't she didn't have any ideas of her own, but <laughs> except just to lift it from the ground. But I figured if we could get it on this table, which is only like halfway up, we could get a bigger grip. Let's see. Push it on its right side. Down. Maybe this will work. I don't know where the camera is. It's over there, I can't see you, but it's here, so. Every once in a while, Savannah has a good idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is it sitting inside of it? Yeah. yeah. That was surprisingly the easiest part of the day. So this water, you know, if it stays in here, it will get algaed. Um, and also to prevent it from freezing in the winter, we're gonna box it in and stuff it full of, you can do a lot of different things. I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do. Probably like foam board. We'll see. You can do foam board, you can do wood chips, whatever, just to help it keep it from freezing. Um, this is the beginning. Everything's nice and level and also, they, they hold like, I don't know. They're both 250 like, or 260. Yeah, I think one's 250 and one's 275. Yeah, and then we're yeah. going to have the, right here, is going to be another IBC tote for... For our vermicomposting toilet, which you guys want to see this, okay. It is the coolest off-grid toilet of all. I don't see very many people doing it. You get to have a toilet that flushes. Your guests will come over and sit on a toilet and they'll never know that you have worms eating their poo. And uh, <laughs> that's what it is. It's really cool and I can't wait to show you guys. And it's like the project I'm the most excited about. <laughs> it's not the project I'm most excited about because there's gonna have to be a lot of digging. Um, the IBC tote has to go kind of like halfway down in the ground. The water being set up is the is the first step to being able to have a toilet over here. Like you have to have those water, the water, and, and, and the shower. Yeah, I mean the shower. This water is what's gonna run shower, and we're not gonna have. I mean, we, our shower will be in a shallow bathtub, if you will, but we're not really gonna have baths because off grid, you just need a lot of water for that. Like there may be a place for that once in a while, but um, we're just gonna have shower sink and toilet and I think yeah the shower and the toilets place is going to take the most water so right now this is where the gutter ends and it needs to go into the top of that tank so we've got to kind of figure out how to make that work so it's sad that this one that we All right, so the hole's over here, and this is where the um, gutter ends. And basically, I need to get some more parts, but it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so right now I'm trying to figure something out so we can collect rainwater. The lid, this middle part pops out, so we're gonna do that and put the mosquito netting underneath it. Do
Alright, that should work for that. I guess we might just have to prop something up to drain water there when it is raining. supposed to rain really early in the morning and then all the way into um, Saturday so I want to get the little rain collection thing from the gutter um, situated I actually had something kind of rigged up that worked now I've got something more legitimate that I'm gonna try to install really quickly <laughs> all right so the idea is that this will go twist into here fabulous I don't need it to be like super tight I just want it to you know not come out and then I'm gonna put a cut some of this pipe here we'll have an elbow and then we'll have another elbow here and then this will connect and sit right there These don't have to be glued together. It's just light pressure going through these. The plan is to, you can't see, but there's a piece of wood here. Um, kind of like make something to hold it, like attach this up here so it doesn't move. Should be good for now. All right, so this is what it looks like. It will go right into there. For now, this is my prop up thing that's going to keep it in place and it'll go right into that IBC tote. <laughs> 